Welcome to Dryson Learns Things. I'm Dryson, and today I am talking with Eric Fide. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Fun fact, we already recorded this once, but I forgot to hit record. So, I want to say thanks again for coming back for round two and, and making sure we get your important message across. Um, first off, Eric, introduce who you are and what you do. Yeah, so my name is Eric Fide, and I'm a director at Conifer Health um, within our sales and marketing department. And for those that don't know Conifer Health, we're a technology-enabled health services company that um, provides revenue cycle services to hospitals, health systems, physician groups, as well as um, we have value-based care solutions for employers and unions. Um, so we strive to be your partner in care, not just a vendor. And um, our clients typically rely on us um, and our expertise to solve their revenue cycle pain points that improve their bottom line as well as their operations. Love it. Now, one thing I, I remember talking to you about was the fact that your service has a nice little personalization persona twist to it. Talk to me mm -hmm. about what it is and how it works. Yeah, so um, one of the favorite campaigns that, that um, I've enjoyed working on was it's an ABM campaign, which you know is very standard, very typical. Um, for our ABM campaign, we put a little twist on it. So um, just as a, a high level overview, within revenue cycle, there uh, um, across a hospital, there may be 13 stops along the way, each of those stops typically fall into a, a, a front, middle, or back um, uh, of the revenue cycle um, processes. Front being, think if you're a layperson and in, in think um, patient scheduling, right? And then if you're thinking about the mid middle of the rev cycle, a little bit less patient involvement, but that would be things like coding of the documentation, and then finally, on the back end, there are things like um, it's AR, but it would be billing and collection. So from a very high level, each of those departments, we could have 13 different directors and VPs, in, in addition to the hospital health system, VP of revenue cycle and CFO. So the reason why it was important for us to put a little bit of a twist on our ABM is every marketer knows um, when you're part of an ABM, why you start getting emails that have nothing to do or even germane with your day-to-day -day duties, has nothing to do with any pain points that you may be experiencing, et cetera, and you can generally go, oh yeah, I guess I'm part of somebody's ABM campaign. Ours put a persona twist in that we wanted to identify leaders that are in the front, middle, back that may be experiencing those very specific pain point resolutions so that our messages could be very specific to their persona, right? And so we utilized all of our different channels, email marketing, social media, um, webinars, et cetera. Um, and another little twist was we didn't just have sales buy-in and sales leadership buy-in. We actually involved them and were an active participant within, participant within our campaign. So in addition to having them actually select target sites that says, here's hospitals and health systems and physician groups that may need our services because they need could need some financial improvement or maybe operationally they just aren't there and when i say operationally think manpower could be a cause right where there's manpower shortages all throughout healthcare so maybe it's it's not that they they don't have everything in place they just may be missing components um, so we enable them to select those facilities and then within there we we identified those um, leaders, um, whether it's directors, senior managers, managers, VPs, it didn't matter, based on their um, category of front, middle, back. So we knew we were getting our messages in front of leaders who may or may not be experiencing those pain points. And when I say may not, it, it may be germane to my job if I'm a, a director of coding. I may have coding issues, but manpower may not be one of them. They may be something else. But it, so it, it really helped us, um, to, and, and again, think in terms of an ABM campaign as generally a shotgun. You're blasting an organization with key messages that um, you hope resonate as, an, resonate as an organization. 
whereas ours was a little bit more of a precision rifle in, in that if I can get a coding pain point in front of a coding director or a coding VP um, and, and it really hit home with them, it increased our engagement, it increased our you know, uh, web page landing sites, you, you name it, um, involvement. So that was a really fun campaign because as all of us are recipients of marketing campaigns in some form or another, but if you think about it, it it's always nice that even in your own personal social media, if you click on something that's a product, that more than likely you're gonna to continue to not only see that product, but then you'll start to see, like in Meta, you'll start to see um, competing products. So it's kind of nice for us to go, all right, we know we hit home and that um, we know they have this issue. So um, it really helped us also hone in on our KPIs and, and knowing what our open rates, you know, watching our open rates improve, watching our click-through rates improve, our engagement improve, because we knew we were hitting a home run. Yeah, I think there's something to be said that when you can do personalization at scale mm -hmm. yeah. and talk to someone specifically, I mean, yes, it might be an yeah. ABM campaign, but when you can make someone feel like you're talking directly to you, your problems, that yeah. just makes people feel more empowered to want to do business with you, to want to follow along and, and work. Do you agree? Sure. Oh, no, absolutely, right? The, the worst thing you can do and to me in an ABM campaign, and I get it all the time, is why am I getting an, an email about HR, right? I have no, or compliance. I'm like, I have nothing to do with those. And so I prompt, yeah. And so worst case scenario is I unsubscribe, which is, you know, that could be unfortunate because you may have a product or service that, that actually is beneficial to me down the road, but because you shotgunned approach to me, I'm out. Um, and, and no marketer likes to see unsubscribe rates creep, especially when you can prevent it. So, um, so that was really nice, right? And, and we could also manage engagement. So if you didn't open an email and you're part of our drip campaign, maybe that message, I think a little bit of A-B testing. So maybe that message didn't really hit. But in the B message that comes along later in a drip campaign, all of a sudden that one does hit, right? So new pain point, et cetera. So really nice to know that we were picking health, hospitals and health systems and physician group that could really benefit from our services and know that we're getting that message of what we can help them with to the right person really helps to not waste their time, right? And so you're being, you're being intentional with that person very intentional. on top of it. Correct, very intentional, very strategic. I love it, I love it. Well, Eric, mm -hmm. I think this is a good spot to wrap up for today. So uh, I wanna say thank you once again for yes. being on Dryson Learns Things. It's been a great conversation and I've learned a lot here today. Um, the today's workshop or today's podcast is sponsored by the Made by Things Discovery Workshop, your content brainstorming partner for helping brands brainstorm those problems of the customer journey. Um, so yeah. Eric, I just want to say thanks for being on the show. I Absolutely. really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much. Dryson Learns Things is brought to you by the Discovery Workshop from Made by Things. If you are looking for a content partner to help you brainstorm, set goals, and create content that truly resonates with your audience, check us out at madebythings.com slash discovery.